Okay, so this is a quick recording on a sort of a summary for Chapter 3, Resistors for Electronics. Okay, so firstly, how do we select and choose a suitable resistor? Okay, so first of all, we have to kind of know what a resistor does. It resists, it resists and opposes the flow of current. So when we add a resistor to a circuit, what we do is that we can control the current. So the example given here is of a, a loudspeaker. So when I decrease the resistance, when I drop the resistance down, the current increases. And when the current increases, it becomes louder. Basically, when I change the resistance, more or less, the output will also change. Okay. But what affects the resistance of a conductor, usually uh, a wire, right? So this is the formula that you have to remember. Resistance equals to, this is rho, it is the resistivity, the length of the resistance, A is the cross-sectional area. So you have to remember this formula, okay? So you have to remember this formula, exclamation mark. So these are the factors that would determine the resistance of a conductor. So I talked about length. Now, the longer it is, the longer it is, the higher the resistance. So the resistance is proportional to the length. Okay, so the longer the, res the conductor, the higher the resistance. So remember this. So that's length. Cross-sectional area. Now, for the cross-sectional area, it is inversely proportional. So what this means is that if I have a thicker, if I have a bigger conductor, the resistance is going to be lower. So remember, the length is proportional. The greater the length, the greater the resistance. But the greater the cross-sectional area, remember the cross-sectional area is inversely proportional, the greater the cross-sectional area, the lower the resistance. So remember this relationship. Okay? And of course, you have to know this formula. Remember this formula because you, you probably need to use this formula to calculate a unknown. So that is the resistance. Next, um, for our course of study here in electronics, we are going to use... Okay, so basically in, in the world of engineering, there's a lot of wires with different diameters, cross-sectional areas, so on and so forth, right? And uh, what they've done is that they've come up with this table, AWG number, which corresponds to a certain diameter and cross-sectional area. For our course of study, we are only going to use AWG22 wires. You don't have to worry too much about this. Uh, you do not have to remember this table. So you do not have to remember this table. It's just a good note to, to uh, know since you are studying electronics that we are using the AWG22 wires. Okay. So next, we come to resistivity. Remember, I was telling you about calculation of resistance. It is uh, rho L over A. So now I'm going to talk about rho, okay, which is the resistivity. So resistivity is a property of a material. So silver will have its own resistivity. Copper will have its own resistivity. The bigger the resistivity, that means it's more resistive to the current trying to flow through. Uh, so if you apply a bigger resistivity to this formula, it means the resistance of this conductor is generally going to be higher. Okay. Of course, there are three factors we have to consider in this formula. The resistivity, the length, and the cross-sectional area. But uh, different materials will have different resistivity. So what I tell the class is that, for example, gold. Gold has very, very low resistivity. It's able to conduct current very, very well. So that's why uh, there are many electronic components which uses gold in the construction of that component. But of course, when you introduce gold, which is a rare metal, the price of that component increases. 
So it's good, but there's always a trade-off, yeah? So know that resistivity is proportional, directly proportional to the resistance. Okay, so now we come back to this formula, which you must know and remember. So this is a worked example. So they've given the length of ABC, okay, cross-sectional area, compare the resistance of A and B. So if we look at A and B, the cross-sectional area is the same. So if I write down the formula, resistance equals to rho L over A, the cross-sectional area is the same. So it doesn't change, okay? The length of A, so let's use a different color for A. The length of A, so the length of A is greater and the length of B, let's use this color. The length of B is smaller. So if you are looking at this purely from uh, this formula point of view, the resistivity is also the same since they are the same material. So length is proportional to the resistance. So since A has got a higher length, a longer length, therefore A has got a higher resistance, all others being equal. Okay, so this is talking about A and B. So A has got a higher resistance. Now let's talk about B and C. Let's compare B and C. So for B and C, I'm going to rewrite this formula. R equals to rho L over A. For wires B and C, the cross-sectional area is now different. The length is the same. Okay, so the length is the same. The resistivity is the same. So now we have to compare the cross-sectional area. So for A, the cross-sectional area is bigger. For B, the cross-sectional area is smaller. Now, you know that the cross-sectional area is inversely proportional to the resistance. So, a greater cross-sectional area would mean a smaller resistance for A. So, the resistance is smaller. A smaller cross-sectional area for B means the resistance is greater. Okay? So in this case, comparing B and C, I can safely say that A has a smaller resistance than B. Okay? So that's resistivity. So this review question says that a copper wire has run out, a student uses nichrome wire as a replacement, explain whether this is a good practice. So for now, I have to come back over here and show you copper, Nichrome. If you look at this, the resistivity is different for copper and nichrom. So for copper wire and nichrom wire, resistivity is different. So when you change a parameter like this, the output, the, the experimental parameters are already changed. They are skewed. So if you change the parameters already, the experimental values you get will not be consistent. Okay, so maybe for uh, the first few experiments, uh, for the control, he uses a copper, but then he ran out of copper. For the variation, he uses nichrom. Uh, it's not going to be a fair experiment. So this is not a good practice. Okay, not a good practice. So then next for question two, uh, he's using unnecessarily long wires. Why this is not a good practice? Um, so what happens is that when you increase the length unnecessarily, you are giving uh, additional and probably unnecessary resistance to your circuit. And when you increase the additional resistance to your circuit, um, you are going to make the circuit less efficient because a higher resistance means more energy loss. Okay, so this is also not a good practice. Okay, so that is uh, 3.1. I'm going to stop here. Uh, if you're not sure about anything, please 
go back to any part of this video, review it. Uh, if you've got questions, you can email me uh, or you can ask me in class. Okay? So review this section 3.1, understand everything before heading on to section 3.2.